I want you to make a prediction. What is Esam's edge guard success rate against MKLeo during the grand finals of Glitch Konami Code? Consider that Pikachu's edge guarding is traditionally considered a strength of his in the Joker matchup. Also keep in mind that while Esam has one of the best edge guarding games in the world, MKLeo also has one of the best recovery games in the world. Lastly, remember that Esam wins in a convincing 3 to 1 fashion, ending the tournament with this monster combo. Yeah. Type your predictions in the comments below. And don't edit it. You sly. Cut. So what is Esam's edge guard success rate in this set? How many does he hit? And how many does he miss? Well... Not only does he drop every single edge guard in games 1 and 3, but he only hits 3 edge guards out of 21 attempts over the course of the whole set. He's just about as likely to miss a fire blast. Here are the timestamps for the edge guards I counted. There's a lot to unpack here. The further away Esam's edge guarding percentage is from the number 50%, the less it can be used to support the claim that edge guards are at least a semi structured high versus low mix up. Since it's way off, we can't even call it a mix up really. The phrase execution test is a more accurate descriptor of the situation. Esam is attempting to test Leo's ability to react to his attempt. And most of the time, Leo delivers. There are two factors that aid the offstage defender. Firstly, by placing themselves next to the ledge, the edge guarder declares their potential intent to go for an edge guard. This is a tell that mentally prepares the defender to respond. Secondly, the edge guarder's vertical and horizontal momentum is drastically reduced as soon as he leaves the ledge. As a result, he can't travel toward the defender fast enough to be impossible to react to. The defender has a movement advantage against the edge guarder because the defender can use special moves, which in general were designed by the developers to give the characters a quick burst of movement toward the stage. However, since the aggressor isn't moving toward the stage, he has to rely on his aerial drift alone. This gives the defender the ability to recover around and pass the aggressor. Edge guards tend to work when the opponent makes a mistake. This is why I think the phrase execution test is an apt descriptor. This example is taken from the legendary set between MK Leo and Tweak at EVO 2019. Here, Tweak's double jump is an inaccuracy. He could have conserved it and then drifted towards the ledge until he reached a distance where he could unreactively double jump and up be toward the ledge. At this point, the situation isn't completely lost for Tweak, although his second mistake of switching to Ivysaur allows MKLeo to reactively swing with a second back air, netting the stock. Question, what's the punish for missing an edge guard? Here's an answer. The two possible punishes for missing an edge guard are getting ledge trapped and losing a post edge guard scramble. Let's look at examples of both. In this clip, MKLeo is able to reach the ledge first, allowing him to gain stage control. He then allows Esam to neutral get up, which puts Esam in enough frame disadvantage that Esam needs to pick a defensive option. He opts to do a T-Jolt. However, Esam still hasn't gotten out of the corner, and he feels like he needs to roll out. Even though he misses his punish attempt, MKLeo realizes that Esam still has not entirely escaped the situation. MKLeo reactively punishes Esam's spot dodge here. Since this whole situation arose from the frame disadvantage inherent to neutral getup, I would argue that this situation constitutes an extended ledge trap. High level decision making is required in order to capitalize on an opponent's edge guard attempt when you reach the ledge first. Now let's look at a clip where Esam and MKLeo reach the ledge at the same time. Here, MKLeo opts to double jump from the ledge while Esam ledge hops and does a down air. MKLeo is able to find the punish on the down air on reaction, although he drops the combo. Nevertheless, a scramble situation like this would not have occurred if Esam had instead chosen to go for a ledge trap. By committing to the edge guard, Esam introduces the possibility of randomly losing the next situation. All that being said, I don't completely detest edge guarding because it can be a useful strategy in a pinch when you want to coast past your early bracket matches, for example, or if you want to double down on a choking opponent. A single edge guard can swing the tide of a set, and this is why players like Esam are able to secure crucial games in high pressure situations despite having very low edge guard success rates. Oh my god, he did it!